Good evening, everyone. I'm really happy to be with you today. I'm so happy to, to have you also today. And I would like to apologize for the gap of, of 20 days. It was a major changes that happened to my life. I had a new girl, a, a new baby girl called Maria. She's a major change in my life. And I'm really happy for having her in, in my family. And uh, I'm sorry for any inconvenience that might happen to, I mean, in your schedules. And let's hope that this was like a break for everyone because this is a long uh, program. And I hope you, you had a time to review and uh, at least to have a break. So thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Manal. And uh, thank you everyone for being patient with me. Uh, so let's start today. I'm, I'm really, uh, eager to talk to you today about beneficiaries and how we could uh, explore more about the idea of beneficiaries in, in proposal writing. Uh, today's subject is actually uh, of huge uh, implications on not only developing the proposal writing, but also you need to, to understand what it means uh, in terms of beneficiaries, beneficiary cal calculation, yeah, single count, double count, especially on uh, um, uh, especially on monitoring and evaluation and, and collecting of data and evidence of uh, project uh, activities and indicators tracking. Uh, so today it will be really uh, um, important um, and uh, hopefully you, you will get new insights from what we will present. And I will be glad also to receive your comments on today's subject and uh, any other subjects we discussed before. And let me share with you the slides and let's just start. As I mentioned, um, today everything will be related to beneficiaries. And this is session eight. Um, um, I think it's it's the fourth session in terms of uh, proposal writing, so it's all going to be about beneficiaries. Let's explore and let's discover new things. So uh, the objectives of, of today's subject is mainly to, to understand more about direct beneficiaries and indirect beneficiaries and what's the difference between both direct and indirect, but also in terms of indirect beneficiaries, we have what is called potential beneficiaries. When are we going to need this term, potential beneficiaries, and why it's different from indirect beneficiaries? And uh, we have also another term, it's called people uh, reached. Maybe those of you who, uh, who didn't work before in democracy and governance projects, maybe peace building projects, sometimes we use a lot these, these terms, potential beneficiaries and people reached. Uh, so uh, today we will talk about people reached and also the beneficiary calculation. How can we calculate the total number of beneficiaries at the level of the project? Uh, but also we will discuss how we calculate the, the targets within each uh, individual indicator when we develop the logical framework. So let's dig in deep into today's subject. Um, we are, every day we are showing this uh, figure just to see that we are progressing. So now we are talking about beneficiaries. Maybe we didn't talk a lot about activities and work plan, but all we will we will come back to it. Uh, so in, uh, today we will focus mainly on this part of the proposal, and it's actually a very important part because it is part of the indicator, and the indicator is is the heart of the logical framework and the heart of the whole project. So. Let's go. Types of beneficiaries. We have, uh, we usually use these two terms, direct beneficiaries and indirect beneficiaries, and we could, we could um, classify them or we could have these um, parts uh, of, of the direct and indirect uh, beneficiaries. So usually indirect beneficiaries, we, we consider those that, uh, beneficiaries that are direct beneficiaries as primary beneficiaries. And in many times with many donors, for example, the Uni uh, European Union or U European Commission, uh, they usually use the term of final, final beneficiaries. So who are the final beneficiaries and the primary beneficiaries? 
And also, as you notice here, we have with, with, the, with the direct beneficiaries, we are having the target groups and stakeholders. And the three uh, categories are still direct beneficiaries. So the stakeholders, target, uh, target uh, groups, and final beneficiaries. Then we have the indirect beneficiaries. We have what is called secondary beneficiaries. We have the potential beneficiaries, and we have the people reach. Um, we will start with the direct beneficiaries. We always use this figure uh, since the first day of, of this program. So it's this, this diagram is, is our friend. We will use it and we, we, we really need to, to use it every time to, to show the links between the different parts of the strategy and the situation analysis, the problems analysis. And now we are talking about the direct beneficiaries depending on the same figure. Uh, as you notice here, we, we always say that the heart of all what we do is the, the, the final beneficiaries or the affected people. What we do is in order to help these people who are in the center of the target. So when we implement the activities and when we, pro when we provide the services or when we conduct the activities, we, we have the affected people after the, they receive what they have to receive they will become the final beneficiaries. Um, also, we will have what is called the target group. So we, we, we mentioned that these, these affected groups are usually influenced by these groups. So for example, family, families and communities are affecting the, 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 the affected people. Also the service providers, whether they are education providers, for example, teachers or health service providers like doctors and nurses and midwives, uh, also, we have the service facilities staff, for example, the masters or principals of the schools, or we could have the, the health managers, the, the health uh, supervisors, nutrition supervisors, and so on. So these, these uh, uh, the, the staff, the management staff at the level of the service facilities are considered uh, another target group. Maybe we could call it as, as we mentioned here is target group three. And then we, we move to uh, local authorities, sometimes local authorities at the district level, at the sub-district level, um, even at the national authority, at, at the national government, uh, at the national level, we could, mention, we, could, um, uh, we could consider them stakeholders. So stakeholders are those who are having interest in, in the objectives of the project. And they are di uh, like they have direct influence. They could affect the implementation, whether in a good way or in a bad way. So as long as they have direct implication on the program, then we will consider them as stakeholders, and we need to consider them during implementation of the projects through coordination with them through the analysis of their uh, power, uh, positive or negative power on the project. So we 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 have to meet them. We have to talk to them about our project. We have to ask them to help us to, to, to facilitate some, some activities that are related to uh, the project. So the, these will be stakeholders. In general, the, the direct beneficiaries will be the people that receive the service or activities. So they are the final. And these people, if they, if they have attended awareness activities, if the, uh, the service providers were ha receiving training, if the service facilities staff received tools or training, um, also the, the local authorities, if they attended workshops or if, if we met them and we conducted many meetings with them, um, then at, all of them will be direct beneficiaries. In order to dig uh, more, I mean, into this, uh, uh, this thing, we, we need to understand that when we talk about the final beneficiaries or, or the direct beneficiaries, they are the people that we have their names. So, uh, so maybe, maybe I, could, I could even uh, add something here is that we have, we have their names. So uh, I, I, also, I already mentioned it here, but in order to, to make it very uh, clear, uh, so that the, the direct beneficiaries are the group that we, we could have their names. So if the donor asked us to provide the names of the final beneficiaries or target groups or stakeholders who attended the workshops, who attended trainings, who received tools, 
who received services and um, maybe assistance with their food, uh, wa water, sanitation, whatever, then we, we could have their list of names. So this is the, the most critical thing in terms of direct beneficiaries is that we can prove we, we have the, the, the lists of their names. For example, if we are providing uh, uh, health services through mobile clinics or through fixed clinics, uh, 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 then we take the name of every people, uh, I mean every person that come to our clinic, uh, we, we write their names, we write what kind of services they had, their age, uh, where they are from, um, uh, whether it's like a new beneficiary or recurrent beneficiary. So as long as we are recording the names, then they are direct beneficiaries. And also in terms of the, like when, when we provide food services, so when we provide food uh, uh, assistance or cash assistance or even livelihood supports, uh, we, we usually register beneficiaries. We have the lists of the names uh, of these beneficiaries. We have them registered, we have them verified. So we, we have also cards for them. So at the end, we have the names of beneficiaries so that we consider them direct. And this is also applied in, for the target groups if they are teachers or, or like they received salaries or they received trainings or they received tools, uh, school kits, teaching kits, if they are service providers sometimes, for example, midwives, we give them midwifery kits, we give them trainings, so they are target groups. And then we consider them direct beneficiaries and we have the lists, the lists of their names. Same for stakeholders if they attended workshops, we have the list of the attendants and so on. That, that's the major uh, or the most important Part, and I repeat it again and me, many times because this is the most clear uh, indicator that what we what we talk about is the direct beneficiaries, whether they are final target or stakeholder. They think this is more than enough to talk about about the direct beneficiaries, and for sure I, I will receive any uh, like more questions about them in case any one of you have uh, like some questions. So if we are talking about indirect beneficiaries then for sure they are the people whom we cannot identify by their names. As long as we don't have the list of their names or we don't need their names to show it to anybody, the donor will never ask about the names of the indirect beneficiaries. They will just, to, maybe they will ask us about the numbers, how many indirect beneficiaries are we going to serve, then we give them a number. They never ask us for a, uh, like an evidence for, for this number. Sometimes they, they might ask for an evidence, or sometimes not. Uh, like, for example, uh, we, will, we will give like uh, uh, more examples to show, like, for example, if we are rehabilitating a, a health center and we provide equipment, maybe providing also uh, services in this health center, then the people that came during the direct, uh, like the, the duration of the project will be direct beneficiaries. But for sure, this project is not benefiting those who visited us during the, the lifetime of the project, but also uh, will benefit the, those people that uh, that will come even after the end of the project because they will use the same equipment. They will benefit from the wash services we, we rehabilitated in the health center. They will use the same equipment. Maybe they will use even some uh, uh, medications that we left or supported uh, like the, the health center with. So in, in general, these are indirect beneficiaries because they will come like on different times other than the, the time of or the duration of the project. Um, uh, so for example, one, one time one donor asked us to, prov to provide an evidence of the, the total number of the indirect beneficiaries. So we asked the, the, the health office in, in the governorate, it was in Amran governorate in Yemen, and we asked the health, uh, the health office in the government to provide us an evidence, uh, the evidence of how many people, population are served by the health center we supported. And then this, this official letter was a clear evidence for the donor that these people will be uh, uh, an indirect beneficiary. So uh, uh, um, indirect beneficiaries are not those who ha whom we have their uh, needs. The potential beneficiaries is another uh, term that is used by some donors or some maybe uh, international aid agencies, mainly the USAID, like the United States Agency for International Development. 
they are usually asked uh, about the potential beneficiaries and also when when the project is is, is a governance project then usually they, they, they want us to talk about potential beneficiaries because it's like in, on, on democracy and governance projects, on, on journalism and media, uh, on uh, peace building projects, these kind of projects, you, you, you don't have a physical uh, assistance. So most of the activities are kind of awareness messages, whether through radio, through TV, uh, through uh, uh, distributing of brochures, pamphlets, booklets, uh, writing uh, like articles online, uh, posts on social media or whatever. So how can we know who are the beneficiaries? It's, it's difficult. So usually we, we, we usually use the people reach. So people reach are the people that we did not meet face to face, but they received brochures uh, or watched TV uh, listen to the radio or read a, uh, a Facebook um, or other uh, social media posts that we published or have an awareness messages in. So these are the people reached. So they are not, we, we never consider them beneficiaries because the beneficiaries will be the people who we, we meet face to face. So if we, meet, if, we, if we met the people face to face during awareness sessions, awareness activities, if we could receive their uh, like questions and we give them feedback like on timely basis, we could consider them direct beneficiaries. For example, if we are doing training online and we, we meet the people, they ask us, we, we, we respond in the same time, they will not be people reached, they will not be potential, they will not be indirect, they will be a direct beneficiaries. But if, they, if we don't meet them face to face, either online or, or, or we cannot receive their questions and give them feedback, then they are not direct beneficiaries. I will give uh, uh, more examples, so hopefully we will, uh, we will clarify this more. And I will give, um, I will give uh, like true or, or facts, like from, from our uh, uh, implemented projects, uh, whether uh, during my, my work uh, in Oxfam, during my work in NFDHR or, or others, uh, so we could we could use it as an example. So for example, here we implemented a project called a community led total sanitation. It was a big project. We worked uh, on on more than 131 villages. For people like the the people living on these villages, we are more than 36,000 people. All of them, the the uh, they had a intensive awareness messages to to improve their sanitation and to have it covered. Uh, so all the, the all of them they, they built uh, latrines or toilets, uh, bathrooms, and then they connected this to covered pits. So these covered pits became very safe, and the sanitation became very safe. So the idea: whom are our direct beneficiaries in this big project? They are the people that that live in the same villages. So for example, if we targeted the people living in this house, then they are direct beneficiary. And the total number of these beneficiaries that improved their sanitation were 36,000 people in 131 villages. But whom are or, or who are the indirect beneficiaries? They are all the people living in the two targeted districts, especially the villages that are, like, for example, this village is on a mountain. Uh, and while there are many villages down, like below this village, so, if, for example, when uh, for example when when there is a rain, or like during heavy rain, usually the rain comes and clean all their uh, sanitation and take it with 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 the rain, and and this is going to all the the like the water sources, and then it it will become uh, infected by uh, human defecation and uh, like human excreta or bacteria. And then they will become more uh, vulnerable to diarrheal diseases. So people who are uh, like living below this level will will have their water sources infected because of the sanitation of the uh, of of like the people living on on higher villages or like the, on, on the mountainous mountainous areas. So uh, when we improve the sanitation of of the mountainous uh, areas, usually the the people living uh, below are indirect beneficiaries because when we implemented the project, it was not meant to be implemented for them. So
So for example, if, we, if you need us to provide you with the names of these people, we have them. Uh, we have the names of the, uh, like the villages, we have the names of the beneficiary uh, families, their member, uh, like, uh, like family members, and so on. But if you ask us to provide you with the names of 120,000 people, whom are direct, uh, indirect beneficiaries that are living within the same district, although they will, they will benefit because the sanitation has improved, but we don't have their names and we don't know whom they are exactly, and we will never need to collect their names. That's why they will be considered indirect beneficiary. Usually in water sanitation hygiene, this is very clear, but hopefully um, I could clarify it in, in the right way. For example, we implemented this project in 2014 in, in Amran after the, the war that happened there on May uh, 2014. Uh, so we rehabilitated 14 schools. Uh, this was one, one of these the schools. Uh, and if we talk about in the, uh, the direct beneficiaries, they were, uh, they were only the students, boys and girls, that were studying in the 14 rehabilitated schools at the same school year. So, for example, during the project implementation, we could provide names for only 6,500 direct beneficiary students whom were involved or whom were registered and enrolled to the schools at the same school year, which was 2014-2015 uh, school year. So these were the direct beneficiaries. But actually, the, there will be a lot of students, a lot of kids, boys and girls who are going to study in the schools, in the team 14 rehabilitated schools, they will, they will benefit from, from, the, the, uh, like from school, from like the rehabilitation, from the equipment that we, will, uh, that we have provided. Um, so in general, they will be, we call them potential beneficiaries, or we could consider them indirect beneficiaries. They will be 20% of the total number of population in the targeted areas. So for example, these, these uh, schools were in, in four districts. So we were estimating that at least, um, at least 40,000 students or kids will benefit in the coming few years, maybe on the, like in the next 10 to 20 years as a result of the project. But if the donor asked us to provide the names of these people, of course we don't have, because they will benefit from the, the, the rehabilitation, but on the coming years, not during the implementation of the project. So they will be a potential beneficiaries or they will be indirect beneficiaries. Uh, um, another example is, is, for example, this is a livelihood project. We distributed livestock sheep for 350, or I think it, it was for 300 um, uh, families. So for the 300 families, we distributed sheep or livestock. Uh, if, you, if you asked about, uh, about the direct beneficiaries, they will be 300. Uh, if we like, for example, buy seven, which is the average number of people per family uh, in Yemen. So we will have 2,100 people benefited from the intervention or from distributing of livestock. Uh, but whom are the indirect beneficiaries from this activity or from this project? We don't know exactly, but I mean, when I say we don't know, it, it means that we don't know during writing the proposal. When we, when we develop the proposal, we don't know the indirect beneficiaries, but we know for sure that there will be indirect beneficiaries. So for example, the sellers. So for example, we distributed these sheep uh, that we, 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 we bought them from, from sellers from the same areas. So the, those families who sold their sheep are also beneficiaries because they, they benefited from buying uh, their sheep. So they, they have cash or they had um, uh, good cash at the time of the implementation of the project. And this, ca this cash for sure will benefit them uh, for the short run. So they will be indirect beneficiaries when we develop the project because we don't know at that time whom they are going to be. And, and that's why the, the donor will never ask us how many they are or, or to provide an evidence or the lists of their names at the end of the project. Um, in the health project, for example, we, although these, these pictures are from different types of, of projects, but 
as an example, we, um, we implemented one uh, health activity, I mean uh, one health uh, project, uh, which included rehabilitation of four health uh, centers and uh, hospitals. Uh, also, we provided equipment uh, and furniture. Also, we provided uh, health services uh, through two health centers. So in general, uh, during the, this project, we had direct beneficiaries who are the people, the, the people that received health support or health services during the six months of the time of implementation of the project. They were almost about 48,000 people, and we can provide the lists of their names as an evidence that they, they received assist, uh, the health support and medication. But we had indirect beneficiaries. Who, who are they? They will be the people that live in the, in the targeted sub-district, and they, they are going to be 120,000 people. Uh, so we consider them indirect beneficiaries. And then we, uh, we don't have the list of their names and we don't need to provide the list of their names because they will not come during the time of the project. But for sure, because they are living in the same area, they will come to the hospital someday in their life. So they will be a potential beneficiary or they will be an indirect beneficiary. Uh, another example is that in 2012, I, I worked on two governance projects. So, for example, we, we implemented this. I, I was uh, working for uh, uh, RGB. It was the responsive governance project. It was uh, supported and uh, implemented by supported by USAID and implemented by Counterpart International. And then we, we were advocating for, for the safe motherhood, law, motherhood law through um, our implementing partner was Yemen Family Care Association at that time. And then uh, for sure, when we, when we implement a project for advocate, advocating for a safe motherhood law, we don't, we don't have direct beneficiaries because, because women will benefit for sure from this law, but we don't know whom they are. And also they will be all women at at a productive age. So for example, uh, usually um, uh, as, as an international uh, like uh, estimations, usually they, they, they say that 20% of the total population at any given time or at any uh, area will be uh, the women in productive uh, in, uh, or at productive uh, age. So uh, for example, in Yemen, if we have 30 million or, or if we have or, or if we had 25 million uh, people in Yemen, then we will have 5 million women uh, as uh, potential beneficiaries from the safe motherhood law that, that, are, that, that we were advocate, advocating for during that project. So this is a great example for potential beneficia beneficiaries because the, it's like huge number and we don't know their names and they will benefit all over like the, the targeted country or, or areas, but we don't know whom they are and we don't know the, their names. So they are potential beneficiaries. Um, another example is that we, we conducted um, uh, an awareness on the importance of the National Dialogue, uh, Dialogue Conference. Uh, this was in 2012 and, uh, and 2013 actually. And we were printing uh, awareness messages on 2 million water bottles and 900K or 900,000 of electricity bills uh, on Sana'a. So we distributed these electricity bills uh, to almost uh, 300,000 uh, families in, in Sana'a city. Uh, so uh, the, we were estimating that the people reached by, by the awareness messages will be more than 2.9 million people in Sana'a city. So why we didn't consider them indirect beneficiaries? We don't consider them direct, indirect or direct because we, do, we don't know if they, if they are actually going to read the, the awareness messages. Uh, uh, and also we don't know that they will actually uh, uh, know any idea about it. So we will consider them people reached because they, they will like the, the awareness message will go to their house, but we don't know are they going to read it or not? Are they going to, to benefit from it or not? So we, we consider it people reached. So people reached are those that receive awareness messages, whether through brochures, pamphlets, 
uh, booklets, uh, radio, uh, social media posts, or TV shows. Anything related to um, like media is going to be people read. And for sure, we cannot provide their names. Um, I hope that these 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 we are like um, uh, giving like more insights, uh, and I hope I I added something. Uh, of course, we 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 still have 30 minutes to go on a beneficiary calculation, but I will stop at this time to see if there are any uh, questions at at this level. I will I will be happy to to answer. Uh, thank you so much uh, for for okay. Yeah, so if, if anyone has any questions related to beneficiaries, I would be happy to answer. And for sure, we can talk more um, on LinkedIn or any, 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 any time you want to ask. Uh, um, great, I, I think no, no questions. Perfect, so I will, I will um, continue uh, talking about the beneficiary calculation. And, and hopefully I will give you more insights on, on the beneficiary calculations too. Uh, so uh, let's go. Yes, how, so how to calculate the final beneficiaries of the project? This is really important. As uh, usually, um, uh, yeah, before we start talking about beneficiary calculations, usually donors are are all agreed that beneficiaries uh, identification should be and must be disaggregated by age and sex. So we don't say, uh, um, for example, uh, 10,000 students. This is not enough. We need to see how many boys and how many girls. We, we should not say how, uh, like for example, we have 20,000 people benefited from the projects or 20,000 uh, beneficiaries. We should say how many people that are men, how many are women that are above uh, 80 years old, uh, 18 years old, uh, years old, and also uh, how many are uh, girls and boys who are less or under uh, 18 years old. So uh, this 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 is a kind of uh, very well known or very much used term with uh, donors. They usually see disaggregated by age and sex. The disaggregation should be based on population census in the targeted country. So for example, this disaggregation based on age is, is going to be different and also based on sex will be different. For example, I'm here in Lithuania, women are higher more than men. Um, so there will be like differentiation, like while when we talk about Yemen, it will be uh, different because uh, in the census we, 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 we take this as, as a kind of guideline and we, we use it. I will give you the example of Yemen and it will be applied to any other country. So for example, we, we have what is called the beneficiary calculation formula. And I still remember we used this formula very much the, uh, when I was working with uh, World, World Health Organization. We, we used this when we were uh, drafting the, the Yemen humanitarian response plan. Uh, I was working at that time with the health cluster and we were, we were helping to provide the health um, uh, strategy for the whole sector. And we were calculating the number of beneficiaries by, by this beneficiary calculation formula. Uh, also, we used the theme in Oxfam, we used the theme in, in FDHR and in, in all other uh, training that we are doing and it could be applied anyway. So for example, uh, in Yemen, the, according to the census, the population, the latest population census, although it was old, like it was like from 2003, but we, we, as long as it's the only official one, then we will have to use uh, like the same figures and apply to our calculation. So for example, uh, the population by, uh, like this aggregation by six in Yemen, uh, the people will be 49% males and 51% and females. So this is the disaggregation by sex. But if we are talking about disaggregation by age uh, or by age, then we have men over 18, 40%. And, and, uh, and let's say that by age is usually over uh, 18, eight, uh, 40%. And, and younger or under uh, 18 will be uh, 60%. Uh, so this is applied to both men and women. 
if you notice here meals uh, because it was six then we said meals um, uh, but when we talk about age then we we don't use meals we say men because they are above uh, 18 and we say boys they are below or under 18 so boys and men are males but this is disaggregated by age and then women and girls are females but disaggregated by age uh, like the same idea this this kind of formula is really important i hope uh, every one of you will will be able to think about it once we send the the training material you could go through it and think about it a lot when we when you uh, when you uh, do the beneficiary calculations, so I would give you a, a, an example that will clarify what it means and how we are using it, uh, and how we are applying the beneficiary calculation formula during uh, identification of the numbers of beneficiaries, uh, and I hope it will be uh, clear and 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 um, uh, simple. So, for example, we are we are going to support at uh, ten health facilities um, uh, for providing uh, primary, maternal, and child care services for 12 months. So, the duration of the pro pro uh, the project that we are now uh, writing will be 12 months, and we will target ten health facilities. In order to calculate the expected number of beneficiaries, we will do the following: we will assume that each health facility, each one of of these ten will provide health services for 20 people every day and we will assume also that every health facility will work at least 22 days every month so we will have 20 to 22 days every month and we will have a 20 people uh, each day in the same health facility like from the given information, we will we will start to see the number of beneficiaries, males and females, in the month. In one health facility, will be 20 people every day, um, and the health facility will work for 22 days. Will be 440 people per month in one health facility. Then the number of beneficiaries, males and females, in 10 targeted health facilities per month, will be. For, uh, this was for was for one health facility, but we are serving ten. Then ten health facilities uh, by uh, 440, we will we will will be having 4,400 people uh, that will benefit from the services in one month. But the project will will continue for 12 months. So this number we will uh, it will be like uh, times uh, 12. So this number for one month times 12, then we will have 52,800 people that will receive um, uh, health services uh, in 10, uh, 10 health facilities during the 12 months. Uh, so our total number uh, or expected number of beneficiaries, males and females, are 52,800 people. Let's see now that now we have we have this number, but it's not disaggregated by age and sex yet. So we have just the total. Now what we calculated is the total at this level. So we need to distribute the total by age and sex as we just discussed before. This is our formula. I put it like below the, the slide. So for example, when we, to, when we start to disaggregate by age and sex, we will, have, we will start with the number of men. What is the number of men out of the, the 52,800 uh, people? How many men are there or are expected to be part of this figure? Then we will have the formula. We, we, we mentioned that meals are 49% 40, in Yemen. So we will have the total uh, times this percent, which is 0.49 of, of, of the total. Then, because we are talking about men, Men are above, are over 18 years old, so we will have this percent. So it will be the, like this. This equation will be times uh, 0.40. We will end up having 10,349 men. This is number of men. The theme will be applied for women. We will have the total number, which is 52,800 people. 
times uh, 0.51 because we have females are uh, 51%. It will be times 40 because we are talking about women who are over 18 years old. Then we will end up having 10,771. Same thing will be the, with the number of boys, the total number of beneficiaries times uh, uh, like the total number of beneficiaries uh, 52,800. Uh, times uh, 49 because now we are talking about meals so we will still come back to this figure and then because we are talking about the below uh, like the, the boys uh, younger than 18 is 60 percent so it will be uh, times 160 as you notice here uh, in men we said times 40 uh, because of this and here we see times 60 because of this so we will end up having uh, uh, an expected number of boys of 15,523 uh, uh, boys. Number of girls are usually the, the biggest numbers in, in our equation. So usually the total number of beneficiaries uh, are uh, 52,800 times uh, 0. Uh, 51, uh, times 0. 0.60 because this is because we are female, so we, t we took this, and then because we are below 18 so we we will use 0.60 and we will end up having 16157 girls and these are like the expected numbers of of the population this aggregated by age and sex um, uh, and we distributed them according to the beneficiary calculation formula that is provided here and then these numbers we will put them within the indicator as the logical framework. So we will have this logical framework. We have the, the indicator and we have the target. So number of beneficiaries in all targeted health facilities will be like this. Men are 10,349, women will be 10,771, boys will be 15,521, girls 6, 16,157, within a total or the same total which is 52,800 uh, beneficiaries. Uh, this is a, a really a nice example. Uh, it, it has many stages and many calculations, but I hope it was, it was clear. Uh, I would also give you another example. For example, uh, uh, when, we, when we are trying to identify the expected number of pregnant women. So if we go back to this number, we have uh, I will try to decrease the, the size of the font. So we have good uh, figures. Yes, so for the, uh, when we talk about the total number of, of beneficiaries is 52,800. If we want to know how many women, although here we talked about 10,771 total number of women that are above 18 years old, but how many women that would that might or that we expect that, that they will be pregnant uh, out of this number. So how we do that? We know that the annual growth rate, for example, uh, the annual growth rate in, in Yemen is 30% every year. It's, it's a high growth, actually, but as long as it's 3% every year. So the project or our project is, is for 12 months. This means that during the 12 months of the lifetime of the project, the antenatal services uh, or the, the services that we provide for pregnant women will be, uh, the percentage of pregnant women will be 3% of the total number of population or the total number that we mentioned that it's 52,800. So uh, this, this, this total number will be timed by 0 0.03, which is 3% of the total uh, number. So we will end up uh, having this figure, which is 1,584 expected pregnant women that will be served with antenatal care uh, during the project lifetime. And, and then we, we reflect this number of women received antenatal care services. Then they will, it will be for sure 000, zero, zero because we talked about women that are pregnant only. So they will be 100. Uh, 1,584 as we calculated uh, uh, during the, 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 the same example. Um, 
So in general, when we do uh, when we do beneficiary calculations, we will need to consider beneficiary calculation for all the indicators at the level of the logical framework, at the level of impact, outcome, output, and activities. Uh, of course, when the, the indicators are percentage, then they are uncountable. But if they are number, they start to do number, then they are countable. But I will I will talk more about what it means countable and uncountable. Uh, figures. So, for example, uh, we have these these like one. Uh, let's start from here. We have uh, one, two, three, four, five indicators. Uh, let's say that we have five indicators. How many total number of beneficiaries within the project? Uh, these are the, the the indicators. These are the the target, and then we have this. We call it. We call this this. Um, this people, we usually have it on an uh, Excel sheet. We, we, we call it beneficiary calculation sheet. So this is a beneficiary calculation sheet. We put uh, the indicator target, single count, double count, or uncountable. And then are we going to calculate this, this figure or not uh, within the total? So we need to consider this. We need to identify which one of these uh, uh, indicators are single count, which is double count which is uncountable and also are we going to calculate it uh, in the total number of beneficiaries are we going to include it or not so let's see for example we have this uh, education project so we have uh, we have these uh, activities or and and uh, reflected by these indicators for example number of students benefited from school bags and stationery because we are talking about students, so for sure they are uh, below uh, 18 years old. So no men, no women. We will have, for example, boys 5,000, girls 5,000. Then as we are expecting that we will have 10,000 beneficiaries that are going to be students, uh, boys and girls. As long as it is the first one, then we consider it a single count. Um, and it's the first one and the, the, the number that covers the number of, of whole targeted children within the same project. So we consider it as a single count and yes, we will calculate this number uh, as part of the total number of beneficiaries of the project. Then we have number of students benefited from rehabilitation of the, two, uh, the 10 schools. Uh, in this project, we, we were like uh, rehabilitating 10 schools. For, for example, this is an example. Uh, so in these 10 schools, we expect that there will be 10, uh, the same 10,000 uh, students. Uh, so we put them the same, but are we going to calculate them again as, uh, as in the total? No, because we already calculated them in the previous indicator because they are the same. These 5,000 are still the same, and these 5,000 are still the same 5,000 boys. So uh, we, will, we will not have 20,000 people because they are the same figure and the same people. So we, we consider this as a double count. The previous one was already uh, considered a single count. So the number or the total here is, is not 20,000. The total uh, within both uh, indicators is only 10,000. Um, here, the percent, uh, percentage of beneficiaries satisfied from services provided by the project. Uh, when, we, when we talk about percent, then we don't have men, women, boys, and girls. Usually, it's 0, 0, 0, 0. And we will talk about only the, the, the total percent number of beneficiaries. And we expect, usually, this is the, uh, the accepted and um, uh, agreed upon like percentage. It's like at least 80 a percent of beneficiaries should be satisfied by the services. But because it's a percent, how can we, con it's not people, it's just reflecting the, the, the percentage of uh, satisfied beneficiaries. So we, uh, we consider this uh, indicator as unaccountable. So, and we, we call it in, in Portal 365, we have what is called only total. We consider this figure as only total. We don't need to di disaggregate it. So we don't need any disaggregation for, for the percentage uh, or for indicators that started with a percentage. So for sure, no, we don't include this ET as number of people because as, me, as we mentioned, 
it's not number of people, it's, it's percentage of, of satisfied people. Uh, so uh, what, uh, here, what the number of parents attended awareness sessions, because it's parents, they are uh, above uh, 18 years old, uh, and that's how we expect. So it will be 3,000, for example, uh, 3,000 uh, people will attend awareness uh, sessions, 3,000 women or, uh, or mothers will attend the awareness sessions, no children, no boys and girls, then we will end up having 6,000 people. Of course, they are not from the final beneficiaries, they are from the targeted group, as we discussed in, in, the, in the first uh, part of the session. But still, the, the, we, the participated face-to-face -face in the sessions, we might uh, calculate their, their names within the, the activity report, so we can provide the names of the participants in, on these sessions, so we will consider them as direct beneficiaries, and we can calculate them, and we consider them as a single count, and yes, include this figure or, or the total of parents as part of the total number of beneficiaries. The same applies for number of teachers trained on modern teaching methodologies. Uh, for example, we will, we will train or we will provide training for 50 uh, men, uh, men teachers or male teachers and, and uh, 50 female or women teachers. Uh, so that the total number will be 100, 0, 0 for boys and girls, it will be 100 women and men teachers because they are, they are not part of the, the above numbers calculated. So they are still considered as single count because it's different groups. It's not boys, it's not students, it's not parents. So it's different groups, service providers. So the, we still consider them single count. And yes, we will include them as part of the direct beneficiaries and with the, the total number of beneficiaries. Then at the, at the end, the total number of beneficiaries will be, uh, we will calculate like, uh, like this is like a kind of framework we can calculate either way till we will get the same figure. So we will have uh, 50, uh, 3,050, 3,050, 5,000, 5,000, 16,000, and 100. As you notice here, if we, if we calculated every number here, we will end up of 26,100. But because this is not uh, uh, calculated, this is just a double, a double count, then we don't include it as part of the total, so that's how we, we calculate uh, the, the total number of beneficiaries as part of the beneficiary calculation sheet. Uh, thank you so much, yes, um, I think we, we came to the end of, of uh, today's talk about uh, and today's sessions about uh, calculation of beneficiaries and beneficiaries in general. Um, uh, today uh, or this week assignment will be to, to, to continue working on our parts of the proposal related to beneficiaries. So we talk about a uh, number of beneficiaries, the direct and indirect, and then we, 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 we try to calculate the number of beneficiaries uh, uh, in the logical framework for each indicator, and then we, we disaggregate uh, also uh, the numbers. Um, thank you so much for your time and for attendance. I will be also I will be happy to to uh, respond to your questions in case you have some questions. Uh, yes. Um, Any questions, I will be happy to answer. If, if you don't have any uh, questions, then for sure you will, you will receive the, the, the video uh, or the recording of the video by uh, a link to the YouTube. And also we will provide you with the, uh, the material as a PDF. And hopefully you will, you will uh, learn more about, uh, I'm sure most of you ha have already uh, worked uh, and used this in your uh, previous uh, programming and uh, proposals. Uh, hopefully this will clarify some parts of, of your questions uh, if you might have. And let's uh, meet again uh, next week, same time. Um, I hope that this time from, from five to six is, is much better timing because Many people were complaining about the previous timing from three to, to four and from three to five. Most of uh, participants were not able to participate. So uh, all of, uh, or most of the, the, the participants are now 
depending on uh, the recordings and the continue uh, watching recordings and come back to me uh, and we talk individually on, on uh, LinkedIn. Um, thank you so much for your time and I, 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 I will wish you a great and lovely evening uh, and see you next week. Bye.